Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's video, I have some fun DIYs using different boxes. I hope you enjoy. With all that being said, let's get crafting. Box number one is going to be a box of play dolls. I'm using this repositionable sticker book from Hobby Lobby, this wood box from Michaels, and these cute little dolls from the Dollar Tree. Now, sometimes when you get these unfinished boxes, you are gonna want to sand them lightly just to smooth them out. And I will put the dimensions of each of these boxes in the description box. This one is slightly smaller than a cigar box, but it is deeper and has rounded edges. So we're just gonna sand all those edges first of all to get them nice and smooth. Next, I'm using some painter's tape to tape off the bottom part of the box. And I'm just gonna paint this box one section at a time. I'm using this purple acrylic paint from Walmart, just giving it a good coat and then we're going to let that dry. Next, using this piece of cardstock, I'm gonna cut a piece with my trimmer that's going to fit on the lid of our box. Now moving to the inside, I am going to use this grass green to paint the inside of the box and up into the edges. You'll see when we put this together that I chose this color because the scene that is going to be in the box is kind of an outdoors, kind of park type of playground scene. So the bottom part of the box is going to be the grass. Now coming back to the outside lid of our box, I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over this and then we're going to attach down the cardstock or decorative paper that we cut for the top. Next, coming back to the inside of the lid, we're gonna put some more Mod Podge and spread that around. You notice that I did not paint the edges of the lid or the bottom of the box. You, of course, could do that if you'd like. Here, we are going to Mod Podge down a piece of one of the scenes from the repositionable sticker book from Hobby Lobby. I trimmed it to fit right inside and these sticker books have a lot of cute scenes, some of which I've already used, but this I thought would be fun for this little doll play set as a little outdoor play scene. Then on the bottom, you can see I'm going to Mod Podge over all of our green grass area as well. We want this, since it's gonna be used um, with kids, if it gets wet, that the paint won't smear or anything. So I'm sealing everything in with Mod Podge. And then once it's adhered down, we're gonna do some Mod Podge over our little sticker scene here as well, seeing as it's just the background for our dolls. Now here are the cute little dolls that I found at Dollar Tree. I've given a couple sets of these away. I think they're adorable. Um, the packaging though is a little too big because I'm gonna sell this in my craft show. I want the dolls to stay in the package, but I'm just gonna trim around them so that I can fit all four of them into the box. Coming back to the cover of the box here, I'm gonna flip through the sticker book and these are not sticky, they're like um, the plastic on the back. So I am going to have to put some Mod Podge down. That's okay, because I wanted to seal in the cardstock anyway. So I'm gonna cover the lid and the paper with some Mod Podge and then I'll lay down that repositionable sticker where I want it to decorate the cover of our box. Yeah. 
And here's our finished project. You can see I attached two pieces of ribbon on the sides so that the back of the box will not flap all the way down. And I've got all four of the dolls inside. Box number two is a super easy catch-all. I'm using one of these boxes from Dollar Tree that has the little bracket on the front, looks like a drawer. And I'm just going to add some color and some of these feet from Hobby Lobby. So using a baby wipe, I'm going to darken up the outside of our box using antique wax. Next, I have a set of these brass feet from the wood pile section at Hobby Lobby. They are 99 cents and I love adding these to boxes, whether it be cigar boxes or these type of boxes, just to elevate them and give them a nicer look. So I'm using some super glue gel from Dollar Tree, putting some on the bottom there and gluing them down to the bottom of each corner of our box. These do come with screws if you want. You can screw them in, but it's easier for me just to glue them on. So we're just gonna glue these onto the four feet of our box. And that is literally all I'm doing. I love how the feet match the little bracket that already came with the box. And this will be great on a dresser or a table to hold whatever you need to hold. For box number three, we are going to stencil an unfinished wood box from Michaels and use it for cards. So taking this oblong box, I'm first going to tape off the top again. And this one I'm going to paint with Waverly Maze. I love this bright, cheery yellow color. And we're just going to get this all painted up. And then we'll come back and stencil the patterned stencil on the top. Once the top is painted and dry, we'll flip it over and paint the bottom as well. Now this pattern stencil that I'm using is in the April 2024 Craft Club box, but we have lots of other pattern stencils on my Magnolia website that you could use at monarchmomdiy.com. I love this one. I think it's such a beautiful pattern. I'm just trying to center it here now on the top of my box. And then I'm going to use two different colors of chalk paste to stencil this design on the top of our box. Once I've done every other square with French rose, I'm going to come back in and do blue ice and peel and reveal. Look at how beautiful this is. I love that you could do this in any set of colors that you'd like. I just love how fun and cheerful this is and what a fun box to put some thank you cards in and some pens for whenever you need to write cards. For box number four, we're going to do this napkin decoupage lidded box. This was a box that had some sort of Christmas thing painted on it that I sanded away. I'm gonna use this napkin, one of these wood mushrooms, and these four wood little candle cups. I decided on the bottom of the box, I'm going to paint this whole thing with Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. I thought it was a nice green that would complement the design on the napkin.
Then while that's drying, I'm gonna come in and paint the lid with the color ivory. Now once the paint on our lid is dry, I am going to apply a layer of Mod Podge to the top of our lidded box. I think I'm even gonna go maybe around the outside edges as well. But we're gonna use the iron-on method for getting this napkin onto the box lid. So we're gonna apply a even layer of the Mod Podge to the lid, and then we're going to let that dry completely. Once that's dry, I'm going to position my napkin where I think I want it. Go ahead and trim away any excess off the sides. And then once we get it close to the size we need for the lid of our box, I'm gonna take a couple pieces of tape so that we can remove that very front layer from the rest of the plies of the napkin. We don't need those, we just want this top layer. So we'll get that lined up and in place and then we'll put some parchment paper over the top to be able to iron it on. So once we have that parchment paper in between our napkin and our iron, we're going to press it with a warm iron. You do want that parchment paper because you don't want your iron to stick to the napkin and then um, peel it or rip it in any way. So just applying even pressure. I do give special attention around the edges to make sure that our edges are completely sealed. Once you can tell it's on there, use your little sander and in a downward motion, you can trim away any excess of the napkin. And now to seal in that napkin and keep it water resistant, we're gonna apply another layer of Mod Podge. I'm brushing very lightly with my paintbrush. You don't want to rip up or pill the napkin, so go as gently as you can. You can also use like a dauber type of foam brush to apply this top layer of Mod Podge if you choose. Now coming back to the bottom of our box, I'm gonna use some super glue and I'm gonna glue one of these little finial cap things to the bottom of each corner. This will give us some feet for this box, elevate it, make it look a little bit nicer to use as decor, but also as a functional piece. I decided I wanted a knob on the lid of this box, so I found this center, and I'm actually using one of these wood mushrooms that was from Dollar Tree in the fall time. And here I'm just, I have the glue is still a little wet, I'm just measuring around to make sure it's in the center. And here's our finished box. I love the napkin. I love how the green matches it. I will spray this entire thing to make sure it can withstand any spills. For box number five, we're gonna make a memories photo box. And I'm using this larger unfinished wood box from Michaels. It's kind of oval shaped, some scrapbook paper, I'm gonna use four of these plastic photo holders inside the box, and I'm going to end up using a word on the top different than the ones I showed you. So I am going to Mod Podge scrapbook paper. I love the paper from this pack. It's called Theodosia Square from Hobby Lobby. I'm just tracing and measuring out each of the pieces that I need, and then we'll begin applying them to the box. Next, I'm gonna measure this rectangle that's on the front of the box and also on the back. I'm going to cut some coordinating papers that will go with the one that we're putting on the lid. And then I am gonna use that same paper from the lid on the two shorter curved sides of the box. So just measuring and trimming until we get all of our pieces of paper cut. Okay. 
Once we have all the paper cut, I am going to use some painter's tape. I'm just going to paint the um, edge around the sides of the lid. So I don't wanna get any on the bottom part of the box, but it doesn't really matter if I do because we're gonna be covering it with scrapbook paper anyway. But the only place I'm not gonna put paper is going to be around that small edge going around the lid. So I'm gonna paint that with ivory. I did also paint the very bottom of the box with the ivory as well. And now I'm using my little sander just to smooth out the bottom of the box and this edge going around the lid where I painted it. And now I'm gonna start Mod Podging my scrapbook paper on, starting with the top of the box, just applying a thin, even layer of my matte finish Mod Podge. I am going to spritz a little bit of water on the back of my scrapbook paper because it is so thin to be able to adhere it down as smoothly as possible. You have a couple choices when it comes to papering around the bracket and the latch. You could just remove them from the box and then once you have the paper on, go ahead and screw them back on. I decided just to trim around where the bracket is. So here I'm using this blue stripe on the very front of the box and we will also be putting this on the back. So on the back we'll cut a around the two hinges. Once each piece of the scrapbook paper is dry, I'm gonna use the same method as I did for the napkin and go around the edges with my little sander to clean up any scrapbook paper that is hanging over the edge and give it a nice finished look. And here's that back piece I was mentioning where we're going to trim around the bottom half of each of the hinges. This time I'm using my little Fiskars fingertip knife to trace and cut around my paper. Once I have all my paper on, I'm gonna take this wooden word from Hobby Lobby Memories, it was $1.99, and using the baby wipe method again, I'm just going to stain it with our antique wax, and then we'll set that aside to dry. Then once it's dry, we'll just put a little bit of hot glue on the back and attach that down right to the center of our lid. I love the look that this um, adds to the box and excited to be able to fit four of these photo keepers inside as a fun little decorative memory box. And for box number six, we're gonna decorate one of these square paper mache boxes from Dollar Tree, can't leave out Dollar Tree. I'm using some printable paper that I printed out. You could use scrap of paper or whatever you would like. I'm gonna measure the top of our lid and also each of the four sides of our box and cut the paper that I need to cover them. Thank you. 
Once I have all the pieces cut, I'm going to do the same method, just apply a thin layer of Mod Podge, and then we're going to do two of the box sides, move to the lid. I am spritzing a little bit of water on the back of these as well, so that I can um, move the pieces of paper around before they stick completely. We'll do two sides of the box, then move to the lid, then come back and do the other two sides of our box. Once those were dry, I'm gonna take my walnut ink, distressing ink, and using it on the sides. This will be just to distress the box a little bit more and to kind of fill in any spaces between the pieces of paper. The last thing I wanna do is right around the edge of the lid, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue down. I wanted to decorate the edge with this pretty lace ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. So just putting a little bit of hot glue on each side and then gently pressing down the lace. Then if there's any excess at the corner where we started and ended, we'll trim that off as well. And I love how this little box turned out. Can't believe it started out as a $1.25 paper mache box from Dollar Tree. These would be a great way to personalize and just give that added touch to any small gift that you are going to be giving. Now I wanted to finish up this video with a few other boxes that I've decorated in various videos, lives, and so forth. This was a flatware or a knife box that I refinished a couple of weeks ago using rub-on transfers, these metal pieces from Hobby Lobby, as well as the metal feet and some lace. This is a pony play box, very similar to the doll one that you saw me make in this video. This time using these Barbie brand little uh, unicorns also from Dollar Tree. So super fun little on the go play set for any child. Next is this building block play box, similar but also elevated a little bit more because in the bottom it's got the um, Lego plate from Dollar Tree as well as some building sets and this little set of three mini figures that are construction themed. Next is a decorated book box. You can find these at a lot of uh, craft stores or thrift stores. I love how you can just use scrap of paper, some stencils, some ink, and upcycle it. As well as upcycling a cigar box using scrap of paper and ink. Again, some of these metal pieces that are very inexpensive from Hobby Lobby. Well, I thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought, which of these projects was your favorite, and we will see you next time. Take care.